And you, uh, we always worry a little about you because we regard you as the top of the heap, the best of the best, the funniest of the funny, uh, the guy who has it in every fiber of his being, not, not conjured. Uh, it's wow. the real thing. Today's episode is a bit of an anomaly for a philosophy channel. It's a tribute to my favorite comic ever, a man universally recognized as one of comedy's greatest talents, Norm MacDonald. I've never really been affected by the death of a celebrity before, but Norm's death was like a punch in the gut for me. Now part of that is my eagerly awaiting the reboot of his YouTube podcast with his trusty sidekick Adam Egret, announced on Joe Rogan last year, but a lot of the shock comes from the fact that nobody knew he was sick. During his nine-year battle with cancer, he shot his entire podcast and its Netflix spin-off, wrote his fantastic book, and continued his constant touring as a stand-up comic. Norm was among the funniest humans who have ever lived, and one of the most bizarre and contradictory characters to go with it. I also consider him one of my own personal heroes. Before I ever made a YouTube video, I wanted to make a video about Norm's intelligence. Despite his stage persona being built around that of an everyman, admittedly an unusual, archaic sort of everyman. Norm's comedy is laced with references to literature and history, and I've long felt that this intelligence and depth weren't fully appreciated. So I guess this video is my way of paying tribute to one of my heroes, and it's an opportunity to share why I love him, and why I think you love him as well. There are two points of entry into the wacky world of Norm MacDonald. The first is the never-ending source of great Norm content that is the YouTube channel I'm Not Norm, which many long suspected to in fact be Norm, but now we know for sure. The second is Norm's appearances on Conan O'Brien's chat shows over the years. The most famous of these is the Courtney Thorne Smith interview at the end of the 90s, which is one of the most legendary moments in the history of TV. But there are other appearances where the intelligence of Norm seeps through. In one episode, fellow guest Thomas Hayden Church is telling Conan about his farm, when Norm cracks a comment that flies right over the head of both his guest and Conan, who look at Norm as some kind of madman. Uh, that's a windmill. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not, in fact, pump water, mm -hmm. but it's pretty. Mm -hmm. I think everybody can enjoy, again, sturdy steel structure. That's, uh... You ever tilt at it? What? Tilt at the windmill? <laughs> yeah, I thought that's what you did to them. Wait, do you know Robert Duvall? I do. Norm is, of course, referring to the famous episode in Miguel de Cervantes' classic novel, Don Quixote, where the protagonist, one of Nietzsche's heroes, puffed up with chivalrous notions in a cynical world, sees a fight everywhere he goes, and ends up trying to fight a windmill. What I love about this little snippet is how Norm just doesn't care if the joke lands. He doesn't care if the joke goes over the heads of all present. He is self-amusing. Like Nietzsche, he's speaking to his very select audience. And if that audience doesn't exist, then he's doing it for himself. This quality of Norm is noted by the two giants of late night television, David Letterman and Conan O'Brien. Who else could do that? <laughs> right. And, and he doesn't, and if it got nothing, he would stare yeah. and, and tell you, your problem. You know, yeah. I thought that was one of the best. Uh, I mean, dark, but fantastic. Right. And, and also, no one could do it but him. No, no, that's what I was going to say. Another surprising trend with Norm is the supposed everyman's love of Russian literature. One of the greatest performances he ever did was the moth joke on Conan. It's one of those jokes that Andy Richter would say was his grandfather's joke. But in pure Norm style, he takes a two-line joke and drags it out into a 10-minute ordeal that is as much a Dostoevsky tragedy as it is a joke on a syndicated network TV show. I don't know where to turn to. My youngest, Alexandria. <laughs> she, she fell in the, in, the, in the cold of last year. Mm -hmm. The cold took her down as it did many of us. <laughs> and my other boy... <laughs> And this is the hardest pill to swallow, Doc. My other boy, Gregario <laughs> Ivinolitovich. I no longer love him. As much as it pains me to say, when I look in his eyes, all I see is the same cowardice that I, that I catch when I take a glimpse of my own face in the mirror. 
If only the cowardice was stronger, then perhaps... Perhaps I could bring myself to reach over to that cocked and loaded gun that lays on the bedside behind me. And then this hellish facade once How long a drive was this? The precedent of apathy to the masses was set right from the off in Norm's career. He first became famous for his time on Saturday Night Live, where he set the bar for the news anchor and where he coined the now ubiquitous term fake news. He was famous for making jokes that shocked people. His barometer for what was funny wasn't the reaction of the audience, it was his own gold standard of comedy. During this time, he roasted Bill Clinton at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And of course it was very inspiring to see President Clinton up here on crutches making a speech. I mean, I thought that was just uh, amazing, you know. Uh, I mean, it's been difficult for the president, you know, he can't jog now, and uh, he needs help getting around, and he still, you know, he still uh, occasionally suffers great pain, you know. Uh, on the upside, you got your medical marijuana, so that's, uh, you know. <laughs> you must inhale, sir. It's the only way you're going to get better. It's... But ultimately, he was fired from his job at Saturday Night Live for this very irreverence. The story goes that the new head of the network, Don Olmeyer, was great friends with O.J. Simpson. And this was at the time of the spectacle of OJ's trial, and Norm really wouldn't let up. He was warned to stop, but Norm being Norm, his comedic integrity was uncompromising and demanded that he keep going, and so he was fired. In a brilliant move during closing arguments, Simpson attorney Johnny Cochran put on the knit cap prosecutors say OJ wore the night he committed the murders. Although OJ may have heard his case when he suddenly blurted out, Hey, hey, easy with that. That's my lucky stabbing hat. <laughs> Aside from his intelligence and his talent, Norm was a fascinating human being. His uncompromising love of comedy over success and his apathy towards money has something of Diogenes to it. Of course, the gambling stories are more like a Diogenes without the wisdom of philosophy, but I guess I'm thinking more of his unorthodox way of being. Everyone else seemed to be pointed towards achieving the highest success. But with Norm, there always seemed to have been something a little different about him. His greatest love was comedy, and as long as he was a stand-up comic, he had made it. When I read the article announcing Norm's death, there were two facts that struck me. Firstly, there was the fact that he had a partner, and the second was the fact of his cancer and his decade-long struggle. And as well as feeling shocked, I was also filled with admiration. Norm had a wonderful way of separating his public persona from his private life. It's shocking now to know that he has been struggling with cancer for the past 10 years. In the short time since his death, I've seen people speculate that this was in fact the cause of his weight gain, something which became a regular joke on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I gained 45 pounds. Whoa. You okay? Yeah, what's going on? I'm doing it for a movie. <laughs> For what role? What's the role? What are you playing, Jackie Gleason? <laughs> what do you mean? It's not a particular it a movie. movie. I just think they need always need a fat guy in a <laughs> movie. Guy like, doing... But whatever about the weight gain, the rapid aging of Norm in the last few years was without a doubt down to this battle with cancer. In the last few years, his appearance was transformed, and he became grey and gaunt. He was grey in both appearances and demeanor. What strikes me as noble and philosophical is Norm's determination to keep his public and private life separate. He once criticised confessional comedians who leveraged their personal lives for public acclaim. And true to his integrity, Norm seems to have operated the other way around. Rather than commodifying his personal life to gain professional kudos, Norm used his professional life to wrestle with his personal challenges. He used the medium of comedy to explore the theme of death and mortality as he was staring directly into that void. Uh, like I saw a one woman show once and uh, she was like, well, my mother had breast cancer, you know, and, and now I have breast cancer. And I'm like, well, it's everybody. Like they think it's so special when everyone gets cancer and dies. <laughs> Like that's not great. What if we just ended the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know, the, the, it's almost like uh, the height of narcissism to think that you're uh, you're going to um, you know you're going to be so brave as to uh, talk about it 
in person. Right. Whereas all you're doing is just garnering sympathy for yourself. I guess that's true. How is that brave? It seems cowardly to me. You didn't talk about any of the gambling stuff in your stand-up, did you? Was that stand-up? No, 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 never, no, never. I, I you know, I, I, I never uh, talked about me, really. You know, I talked about universal me. It was me, but it was everybody. Sure, I wasn't pretending that it was a specific, right, um, ailment that I had. And if I had a specific ailment, then possibly I do. You don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but I would not talk about it. I would not. Uh, I hope that I would not discuss it and and uh, just to try to try to uh, benefit monetarily from the from that. His death is a massive loss and it's hard to believe that there'll be no more Norm Macdonald bits to look forward to. The world of comedy has lost one of its leading lights and yet with his death I can't help but feel a much deepened sense of admiration for him. Much of his bizarre and out of it appearances over the past decade have been put down to benzos or some drug addiction but now it seems that this was a man who was undergoing treatment for a life-threatening illness. And rather than being a cause for eye rolling at the ever freewheeling norm, the philosophical wisdom and integrity of a life well lived is what shines through. Norm MacDonald is one of the greatest comedians ever, and he will be sorely missed. If you haven't had the pleasure of encountering Norm before, there is no better place to start than his appearances on Conan. And if you watch nothing else by the man, his appearance on that show with Courtney Thorne Smith is one of the greatest moments of comedic wit in the history of television. If you want more, then all of his podcast episodes are on archive.org, which I will link down below in the description. I would highly recommend the first episode with Super Dave Osborne, and for those of you who have never encountered Norm, I can only say you're welcome, and I'm jealous for the treasure trove of genius that awaits you. And, uh, he, has, uh, he has no truck for the sentimental, but if something is true, it is not sentimental, and I say in truth, I love you. Oh, my God.